up to try to rob God's children of their God-given privileges of divine healing, salvation, and, and so forth. He set them scarecrows up. And I, I, some of them were setting up in trees and some on telegraph poles and some even sitting on the fence post right next to the patch. Well, I thought, you, you got them out here in front of me for some call. I thought, well, that's just like, looks like the meeting. Some set way off. They're scared to death. They won't even come around the meeting. The other one gets close enough to be sitting right at the patch. But to my surprise, sitting right on the arm of that clear coat that two big black birds just to eat and do what not happen. And the rest of them flying around, chirping and squawking. Now, I said, I'm just going to ask in my mind, why don't you come down out of that tree and eat you? Are you hungry? Just starving to death. That's the way with people. Just starving to death. He said, well, why don't I said, want you to come out of the tree? If he could speak, he'd say, well, now, looky here. Look at that old scarecrow. Well, you'll have to admit that, that his strawberries in there, all right. Now, you say, is there any strawberries? Yes, there's strawberries. The freeze didn't kill them all. Well, thank God. The freeze never killed all the holiness, the mountain, the movements of the Holy Spirit. Now, got frostbitten a few times, but we got over it. Amen. Just a little scare once in a while. All right. I love it, don't you? Notice, and these others were so close to the patch that they were looking right over and could even smell the strawberries, no doubt. But I said, why don't you get in? They all look at the scarecrow. But I said, look, sitting on the scarecrow, sitting out there eating just as hard as they could eat or fly down and get another berry and fly right up on the scarecrow. Sit there and eat the strawberries. A brother... <laughs> There's no condemnation to them that's in the patch. <laughs> that's one thing to show. They wasn't condemned. They're sitting there eating just as hard as they can. And I say anybody that's in Christ Jesus has no condemnation, no fear. All things have passed away of the old worry, fear, and doubt. And you're just sitting out your hearts open, eating just as hard as you can eat. Well, you know what? An old scarecrow's a dinner bell sometimes, if those who believe. A meal ticket. Yes, sir, you go to see something like that. Now, God is in his people, always been a miracle-working God. All ages, when they had revival, breaking out, they've had healing. Martin Luther, John Wesley, Sankey Moody, or any as you could call. John Wesley, I stood near the shrine. Not long ago, the spirit of him there. There in England or that he was preaching divine healing. And they turned the fox loose, a bunch of foxhounds, and scattered his audience. John Wesley turned and pointed his finger in that man's face, and he said, The sun will not set on your head three times till you'll be asking me to pray for you. And as the sun went down that evening, the man died with cramps in his stomach, and Wesley never got to him. And when Wesley was here in America, in his textbook, or his little book, notebook, he was going to pray for a woman riding his horse, and he, the horse stumbled and fell and broke his leg. And John Wesley went in his pocket and got a bottle of oil, said, Almighty God, you made this horse's body the same as mine. I've got a need to be there. Anointed the horse with oil and rode away. Now, that's Wesley's own words. The day they want to shove you out of church nearly. Brother, we've just fallen away. We had scarecrows, but get around behind it. Now, the devil trying to keep you away from God. And we've got to have a bogus dollar. If we got a bogus dollar, rather, we've got to have a real dollar for it to be made off of. When you get off the boat in India, you find Hindus out there, old hypocrites, trying to lay off some spikes to crown a little for the tourists. But back in there is some real genuine Hindus who really cut themselves and walk through fire and everything, making sacrifice. Some of them have take their hands down for 20 years so the fingernails go through the back of their hands nearly, crying for peace in their soul. They're real sacrificial people, but they're in the wrong worship, of course. But some will come out and crown. We have those things. Someone asked me, now, I'll go Brother Branham, if that Holy Spirit is so great, 
But I've seen people who stood in the meeting and, and shouted and praised God, their tears running down their cheeks, and they would come out and do things that, like sinners and go to sinful places and live in sin, said, was that the Holy Spirit making those people shout? I said, yes. But, oh, do you mean the Holy Spirit would fall on a person like that? I said, yes. Jesus said a soul went forth and sowed some seed. And a, an enemy came behind him and sowed some terriers. And the husbandman said, shall I go pull up the terriers? So if you do, they pull up the wheat. Let them both go together. And at that day, I'll send the angels, and they'll gather all the terriers and burn them, and, and the wheat will be taken to the garner. Hebrews 6 says, that it is impossible for those who were once enlightened made partakers of the heavenly gift, partakers of the Holy Spirit, the heavenly calling, taste of the good word of God and the world, power of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew themselves again to repentance, sins to crucify themselves afresh, the Son of God and count the blood worthy to the sanctified and unholy thing. For, listen, closely now, for the rain cometh all upon the earth to dress it, prepared. But the thistles and thorns are to be burned. Notice, in this same wheat field that was sowed, in there is briars, creepers, stink weed, everything, all growing together with the wheat. And when the drought is on, the creeper is just as thirsty for water as the wheat is. The water is sent for the wheat, but the creeper is just as glad to get the water as the wheat. And by their fruits you shall know them. In the meeting, the Holy Ghost falls over the building. But those who live godly in Christ Jesus are the people that will be taken into the garner and the carriers, not for us to judge, but will be burned at the end. You see what I mean? Then don't judge a person because they can shout or because they can praise the Lord. Judge them by the life they live. And if they're not living the right kind of life, don't turn them down. Pray for them. That's the way to do it. And convert them from a nettle weed to a stalk of wheat. <laughs> Amen. Now, the people's attitude, some people make up their mind that when they come to the meeting, that they're coming to find something to criticize. Well, now, Satan will be sure to show you that. If you come determined you're going to find something good, God will show it to you. Now, it's your attitude, dear Christian. And... Notice, now when Nathaniel, he kind of made up his mind that when he come, he wanted to see what good could come out of Nazareth. And Jesus saw him coming, and he knew he was a just man, a good man. And he said, uh, Jesus said to him, said, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. And so, in other words, if I'd say he's coming in the prayer line here, a man, I'd say, why, behold, there's a Christian, a good, truthful man. Why, he said, how do you know anything about me? He said, before Nathaniel got you, or Philip got you, you were under the tree. <laughs> Number one, quickly, he didn't judge him to be a spiritualist. He didn't judge him to be something wrong. He said, thou, Rabbi, Master, thou art the Son of God, the King of Israel. Now... He become a follower of Jesus. The woman that touched the hem of his garment got the blessing that she asked for. He felt virtue go out, but when that man that knew he was a prophet, as the woman at the well knew he was a prophet, put a rag around his eyes and hit him on the head with a reed and said, Now, if you're a prophet, tell us who hit you. They didn't feel no virtue, did they? It was the way you approached him. And when you're coming to the Holy Ghost, if you're looking off to somebody who's clowning with it, you'll never feel no virtue. But if you'll just get that out of your mind, get the spirit crow back, and say, Lord Jesus, it's my heart. I'm coming. What will you do for me? You'll receive what you come for. That's right. For blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Is that right? Amen. Oh, we love him. How wonderful he is. And now, for in defense, uh, some people 
has made the remark that the only thing this could be would be spiritualism. <laughs> now, brother, it's all right what you say about me, but be careful what you say about God. Well, perhaps what if you could be wrong? If you're wrong, you could cross the separating line would be no forgiveness in this world or the world to come for you. Did you know that? Jesus said, whosoever speaks the word against the Holy Ghost, it'll never be forgiven in this world or the world to come. Is that his word? Just as essential as whosoever uh, born to the Spirit of God, except a man be born to the water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom. All those are scriptures. And that's the reason we should let our yea be yea and nay be nay. And watch what we're doing. Be careful. Now, I am trying to speak of this angel of the Lord. I do not worship that angel. And God who is listening in now, you believe he hears us now? He is my soul judge. And I never, in the first place I'd say this, I believe if I even made the attempt that the angel himself would correct me. For I truly believe he was sent from God. Now, you might not be as firm to believe that as I, because I've talked with him, and I know him. And if there'd be 50 of them standing here now, I would know him from the rest of them. I know his voice for one thing, I would know his look for another. And he's a, he's a man, a man, just as I am, and just as much human looking as I or you. And he looks to be a man in his 30s, I'd say a strong-looking man, holds his hands, and I realize that there's false angels. But every spirit that's not of God does not confess that Jesus is coming to flesh is of the wrong spirit. And I know there's been false angels, but when they testify of God and prove to be of God, then we believe those. Now, angels have always been ministering spirits that sent to the church. Is that right? All through the apostolic age, or apostolic age, they had ministering angels that went with the apostles, the disciples. Is that right? And most always, they appeared to them in a form of light. Is that right? A light shined down upon Paul. Is that true? Blinded him. Peter was in the prison, and a light shined in, the angel of the Lord, and told him many different places. In the scripture, it refers to him as a light. It was a pillar of fire that followed the children of Israel. A pillar of fire. And this, any Bible teacher knows that the angel that led Israel was the angel of the covenant. Is that right? which was Christ. Amen. Notice. Now, as Jesus, or the Christ, Moses, suffered the loss of his, the throne that he would have had in Egypt, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, he chose to follow a pillar of fire. An angel of God appeared to him in a burning bush rather than to be king of Egypt. Now, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Is that true? And if he appeared to Moses in a form of a pillar of fire that led the children of Israel, as he led them in the natural, so could he lead his church in the spiritual today. They were on the road to the promised land. Is that right? We're on our road to the promised land. Is that right? In my father's house is many mansions. If it wasn't so I would have told you. I'll go and prepare a place and come again to receive you into myself. Notice. Now, God, when the pillar of fire, led them, and then when he was here on earth, Jesus, he said, I am the I am. I am that I am. That was the I am that spoke to Moses in the bush. And now he said, these things that I do 
shall you do also, and greater than this, for I go to my Father. Is that true? Now when Jesus is here, and the people came to him, he did not profess to be able to heal anybody. Is that right? He said, I can do nothing, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise, for the Father loves the Son and shows him what things that he doeth. Is that right? St. John 5. Now, I see, he said, I can do nothing in myself, taking no credit. Flesh cannot glorify or glory in the presence of God. It all comes from the supernatural. Now, he said, what I do is what I see my Father doing. Is that true? Well, then, when Nathaniel came to him, the Father had showed Jesus standing here what Nathaniel was doing before Philip found him. Is that right? Amen. These things that I do shall you do also. Is that right? Greater things than this will you do, for I go unto my Father. More of them. Now that same Spirit, not because that I'm here, well, I have no more to do with it than anybody out there. It's because that He is here. Christ is here. The Holy Spirit. The angel of God. And I'm merely just a mouthpiece for him. And Moses was just a mouthpiece for him. And Jesus was a mouthpiece for God. And he died to redeem us sinners that the program of God might be carried on down to the age through the church. And ministers that are consecrated to God become channels where God can speak through, preach the gospel, heal the sick, show signs and wonders. And we've lived down to the time of the preaching and teaching and so forth, and we've got into a place now to where the church is so broke up till God is bringing in again the supernatural to stir the people. Now, man can come and claim anything. A man can say anything that he wishes to. But for him to say it is one thing, and for God to confirm that is another thing. And then when God confirms that it is the truth, then we should believe it, aren't we? Amen. Now, that's just as plain as I know to make it. So when you hear somebody say that Brother Branham was a spiritualist, you tell them that was wrong. I'm a Christian. I'm saved by the grace of Jesus Christ, by his atoning blood of Calvary. And tell me whenever you've seen a spiritualist healing the sick and doing... You say, well, Brother Branham, that looks a whole lot like it. Sure, then it looked a whole lot like it when Jesus was here, and they called him a spiritualist. How about when the Jess lost some mules, and he sent his sons to hunt them? And they said, if we had some money, we'd go down and see the seer, Samuel, and he'd tell us where the mule was. Sounds pretty funny there, doesn't it? <laughs> Does it? And he met Samuel, met him on the street, and said, go on back home, because the mules has already went home. I'm going home with you. See? People, a long time ago you ought to come to God and got yourself settled down. Know where you were standing. The Bible said in these last days that there be a famine, not for bread and alone, but for the hearing of the Word of God. And man would go from east, west, north, and south trying to find it and would fail. You better get sealed into the kingdom of God by the Holy Ghost while you got a chance. You talk about a confusing time, it's a coming. When the Bible said they'd be so close, they would deceive the very elect, if possible. Is that right? Now, another question I want to clear up. Someone said it doesn't mean that you're a Christian because you heal the sick or cast out. That's true. That's right. He said, many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, have not uh, cast out devils in thy name and in thy name done mighty works. Jesus, now listen, Jesus said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I didn't even know you. Now, these people claim they done it, but they did not do it. That's right. For he said, I never knew you. They just claimed they done it. How could you write a check on me without me knowing? <laughs> See what I mean? I'd catch it at the bank. Jesus said, many will come and say, Lord, have not I. He said, I didn't know you. No, you never. See? 
Many will confess and say, I have cast out devils in thy name and in thy name. I have prophesied preachers and so forth. And ever, he said, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I didn't even know you. Some people might have went out and had some kind of a fleshly idea to try to get popular or some big education. They could speak a few swell words and make some money out of it. Jesus said, You workers of iniquity. I didn't even know you. And iniquity is something that you know that you ought to do and will not do it. That's right. And every man knows that he's got to be born again by the Spirit of God. You've got to receive the Holy Ghost. To turn it down is just the same as to turn Jehovah of the Old Testament down in that day or Jesus in his day. Same penalty and worse to turn down the Holy Ghost. And it's not very well thought of. It's talked about. And all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. The devil's always been after the church of the living God. Is that right? And it's always had a black name. Jesus was born to this world with a black name. As a legitimate child. Did you know that? Supposed to be born a, a child out of holy wedlock. Jesus had that hanging on him. But in his heart, he knew he was the Son of God. That's right. And men and women, you know where you stand tonight. And there's only one more person that knows it. That God knows where you stand. So your heart right with God. Really live for him. Be true to him. Love him so much that he, everything else becomes secondarily. And then you love the Lord with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul, with all your mind. God will lead you then. The footsteps of a righteous man is ordered by the Lord. Now these things that you see done, I believe that I reading these scriptures and so forth in the Bible, how about many times, Brother Petrus, I guess he told you about the resurrection of the little boy or something or other. I just went out there to the side of the road to pray in my car again, trying to get myself back a little bit so I could get into the service of the things that would take place. Sitting there in Lapland, where I couldn't even speak one word, and half the Finns couldn't, or the Swedes. And there the Holy Spirit would set in and tell people things all down. They were just in one accord. Everybody just bleeding out for God and just great signs and wonders. There was no friction. There's sometimes you get in such a rut till there is a way to see the right to a man. <laughs> is that right? You just get to a place to subconsciously you're disbelieving when you don't want to do that. See? The thing to do is lay down everything and believe with all your heart. Now, I believe that at, at tonight, I could say this outside, I said it would tomorrow night. Now, when we come here to this, your city, about five, four years ago, the gift of healing was only working by holding the person's hand. And if God will permit a cancer case tonight, I want to show it to my minister, brother, that the effect that that literally takes upon the human body. Nothing that I have in myself is the beat of that demon power pushing back to me. That don't mean nothing. I take hold of you in my hand and show you just swell and nearly again its size and white, big white things will run over the top of it like that, holding that person's hand. Now, what does it? I can't tell you. My hand just gets numb. That don't have one thing to do with divine healing. No power at all to heal. That's just the reaction when my body becomes anointed with the Spirit. That's that germ disease out there reacting back. Now, I can go down here and take a hold of a cripple and it won't work at all. See? Because there's no active germ of disease there. If there is, it'll tell them. Now, and I said then, God promised me if I'd be faithful with that, it would come to pass that I'd be able to, to uh, tell people and they had done in their life. And is that right? And many of you Phoenix people know that's true. Or oh, here it is, just exactly. Now, the Bible says there'll be one something other in there about a spiritual prophet among you. And what he says comes to pass, then hear it. Is that right? Or I'm with. If it doesn't, then don't believe it. Or I'm not supposed to see. Now, what I'm trying to say to you, that God is here. He's confirmed the things that I have said. That, that's true. He's done that. And I believe that he will continue to do it. And tonight... When we call these people to the platform and pray, I want every person in here to this night to help me. And if I can, now when I'm talking to the person, now look here what a statement I've made. How many here for your first time? Let's see your hands. Your first timer. Just look each night. These are groups of first timers. Maybe 100, 150. Oh, more than that. Maybe two, 300. Well, that's when we're happy to have you here. And now... I want you to notice. Now, here's people sitting here, and I don't know. God in heaven knows. I don't know one thing about you. I don't know. There's, there looks like there's, I see one, two, three, four, four, five prayer cards right here. 
There may be some sitting all out through there. You've got prayer cards. On it you'll find a number. And that number will just be will just be called up here just merely to keep the roll. If I say, well, now we're going to pray for some tonight. Everybody who wants to be prayed for, stand up. You know what starts. And we tried every way in the world to send We used to send the prayer cards to the minister. And the first minister got all of his people in. That was about what lasted the meeting. Take about five nights to get all of his through. And then if he failed to give somebody one of the prayer cards to give an outsider, then his congregation fell out with him about it. And then they said we'd go to prayer meeting and all was there with first there, first serve. We'd give out the prayer cards and just keep right on down to we got the whole bunch of them people flying in, spending their money and things like that. And coming in, maybe have one day to spend and have to go right back. Well, there's no need to come in. You can't get there the first day. The prayer cards to give out and that'll take care of the rest of the meeting. So then they, I figured the only way that I know how to do was to come down and give out prayer cards every day and everybody has just as much chance as the other one. That makes it equal for the... Maybe for the people here, the minister's not responsible, nobody's responsible. I'm not myself. I give them to my brother, and he gives them out, or somebody, or my little boy this time. And I thought surely the people would expect a little fellow to give out the prayer cards and to give them out, and no one in the world, only time I come here to the platform, I used to have a little child to stand up and count. And where he stopped, that I would, and then I would start the prayer line from there, and God told people to put their little children up in front so they could count about it. I don't think you'd do it, but it, they do it anyhow. So the only thing I know to do is come here to the platform and say, God, where shall we start that prayer line and start it from right there? Then sometimes it stops, like last night. And by the way, last night I called someone, a certain number. I don't know. I was calling on down to the place, just a one here and there, just where we were dropping my mind, I would call it. And when I got home, somebody had given the little boy a letter or somebody. It was laying on my table when I went in home. And one woman said, I have followed it as long as I can, Brother Branham, and the next thing is suicide. And she described her case, and my little boy and Brother Sheraton then said, Brother Branham, that's the same woman that came to the platform last night and described the same thing to her sitting on the platform, and the woman was healed last night in the meeting sitting here. How God had that number out there, he just called it, just picked it out like that to stop a suicide case. You see how it is? God is so wonderful. Just believe him with all your heart. You'll bring it to pass. Now, God will confirm his word with signs and wonders following. We all believe that. We believe that with all of our hearts. And now, he's here and can do all things. What time is it, Brother Hall? I guess I'm awfully late. Yeah. All right. I haven't got a chance to say how I appreciate Brother Hall. I've just been talking so much. I talked more in this meeting than I have in a dozen meetings before this. There's just something about these that I love. I don't know. It's just something my heart goes down. Oh, since I was a little boy sitting in school, and I used to read of Arizona. How I always long to go to Arizona. And when I get here, I just get beside myself and this morning in that ministerial group to see that wonderful fellowship. My heart just went right out to them, brothers. And now all of you cooperate together and have a great church here. Brother Hall has done a wonderful job. I met Brother Hall some time ago. He's been a bosom brother to me. And I tell you, I've been with Brother Hall a long time, and I believe Brother Hall lives just exactly what he talks about. <laughs> That's right. A good man, a Christian man. Brother Lindsay has gone back to the voice of healing. He has a lot of, of subscribers and things. He has to be there. Perhaps Brother Hall and I will be together the rest of the summer, all but want to meet with Brother Baxter, another fine Christian gentleman. Brother Baxter will be going to Africa together pretty soon. Now, God bless you all. And let's uh, have a, our prayer line now. First, let's bow our heads for just a word of prayer. Everybody be deeply and sincerely. And forgive me for talking too much and taking up time. I want to pray for just as many as I can get through this line tonight. When I talk a long time to a person, it keeps telling what's wrong with them and what's this and what's that. As soon as I can see the first speck of faith, I, I dismiss them just so they can go ahead and get well. Oh, Father... You're here. We love you. This morning in the fellowship, to see that young man come up, pull out of that little box some glasses that he had to put in his eyes to see. I don't know, but he tells me that I called him out the other night in the audience there. Been in that condition for long, long. Eyes going blind, and now he's packing them artificial eyelids or limbs in his pocket 
and through the power of the Holy Spirit looking through them eyes. How we thank thee, Lord. Hearing those that said I was sick, diabetes was killing me, and now I'm healed. Hearing all these great testimonies that's coming in from the meeting, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the wonderful fellowship, and now may the Holy Spirit meet here. And dear God, now I've talked a long time. Many have talked. The people are well worn. They've been sitting. But I thank you for them. They're not weary. They're still waiting to see you. They've loved you. They believed you before they could even see any move of you. And now you're beginning to reveal yourself closer. And after a while, we shall see you up here. You revealed yourself in your word years ago to our Father. And this last days has been coming down by the Holy Spirit and now coming into a deep manifestation of the supernatural. The next step will be Jesus to appear. And how we thank you, Lord. And now may all these poor sick people here tonight believe with one accord and every one of them be healed, Lord. Thou knowest who's coming to this platform. You know how many of them cards that's out there and what the disease is and how long the people's going to live? There might be some that must have faith right now or tomorrow may be too late. Now, Father, in that group, you call your people. Give them faith to be healed. Grant it, Lord. Or we ask it in the name of thy child, Jesus. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for your kindness. And as I asked you to bow your heads, I just looked over the audience, and even standing on the outside, the people had their heads down. No wonder God's working through you like he is, because you have a great respect. I believe, not because we've been here, but because we've got together, I believe God's blessed us. Don't you think so? And it's made my heart feel happy and rejoicing. Now, there's a group of prayer cards out there. Where's Billy? How many did you give out today? A hundred. That's 50 more than you have been giving out. All right, maybe we can call. Just let me stand tonight as long as you can. And now, now just then I felt the Spirit of the Lord come down on me just then. Just then touch me. That's right. God, who is my judge, standing here now, just now whirled down over me just then. I feel it now. And my hands are beginning numbing, feeling strange. My lips get so thick sometimes you'll notice me rubbing my face. Feels like my lips are that thick. Or just... And if I don't talk very much to the person, I can get more through. But if I go to talking, you've noticed that, haven't you? The more you talk to a person, the more it begins to show. And sometimes I get them at home, at my home or somewhere, set them down to themselves and just sit and go to talking. The Holy Spirit will just talk an hour right down along the line. That's the reason out in the meetings they keep my thing in secret because when I get a hold of you know that just weakens me right down. And when I get to the meeting, I'm just all out. See? And that's the reason we try to, as long as I can live, we want to share it along everywhere so everybody will get a view of it and start praising God and believing Him. All right, Sonny, so you give one to hundred. Let's make the first, what, few, few one to hundred. Well, let's begin. What did we start last time? Seems like we begin at one last night, One, I believe we begin at one. Well, let's begin 25 tonight. Let's begin 25 to 35. Q, 25 to 35. And you watch your cards now. If you're not able to get up, then just, uh, just uh, hold your card. When you see, if you're number 28, you see three pass through, then hold up your card, you see, and tell the ushers they'll come get you and put you right in the line, anywhere. Now, now this is the ministry, friends. This is to make faith. It's a power. I, I, I wouldn't say a gift of divine healing, which it is. Anybody that's got faith in healing has a gift of healing. See? Anybody that believes in divine healing and believes in prayer for the sick, that's a gift. But now, to heal somebody, no, I can't. The only thing I'll be able to do would be know what's wrong with you or know why that you can't get healed. Now remember this. Listen close. Remember this. That's Q 
What was that called? Forty. Twenty-five. Q twenty-five to thirty-five first. Q twenty-five to thirty-five. Look on your card. Some Spanish brother ought to speak that so that they would understand. Somebody can speak Spanish. Say Q twenty-five to thirty-five, please. Anybody speak Spanish here? Come here, brother. <laughs> I'm sure I couldn't say that unless the Lord was telling me. Thank you, brother. All right. Q twenty. Five to thirty-five first. Now, as soon as we get through with those, if you have good faith, those that's coming line, then uh, we'll call another number, or either just start to start picking numbers around all over through the whole thing. And I w- want you to see, my dear brother, sister, that coming up here, it doesn't matter. I, I can't say, well, let Miss uh, John Doe or this over here come. It doesn't matter to me. I, I had, no, I don't know where to start and what to do. I'm just leaving that to God. And the only thing it will do will help you build faith. You, you could come here and stand on this platform, and I could pray for you until tomorrow night at the same time, and it will never have a bit of effect on you until you believe that God heard my prayer. Is that right? But you can't come here and stand here without me knowing what's wrong with you. <laughs> That's right. Yes, sir. And the things that's causing you and your sins and the things that you've done, He'll certainly tell you that. That's a gift that God gave to me, see? That's my possession that God gave me. But now the other, Jesus Christ has already done that for you. Nobody can do it because he's already done it. We believe in prophetic things, don't we? We all believe in it. And now, everybody, Reverend, is that your first patient, Billy? All right, bring the man along. All right. Brother Sherrod, you just watch, and if there's some of them kind of sickly, set them a chair so they can sit. All right. Fine. Now, I'm sure that all of you, how many love God? Let's see your hands. Right. Now, you love him. And I, I, by his grace, I trust that he'll let his humble servant bring his presence down to you all now. See? That's what I pray that God will do. Now, here stands before me a, a Spanish or an Indian brother, perhaps a Mexican brother, and there's something that's uh, wrong with him. I, I do not know. I can't tell you. And I'll have to find out. And if he'll believe, well, then he will be healed. If he doesn't believe, he couldn't be healed if Jesus was standing here and wearing my suit, standing right here. He couldn't be healed. He'd have to believe. I don't see what more he could do now than what he's doing. Now, everybody, real reverent. Just be as reverent as you can. Listen close. And I'll try to get just as many through. Of course, if it goes to stopping me and pulling me, and many people are kind of halfway faith, then he goes to moving out and tells something else and something else and something else, and the first thing you know carries me away, and they're standing everywhere watching me, because last night was kind of hard, and I'm spending my life for you people, you understand. I perceive that you're a Christian man. You believe in God, I believe that, my brother. Isn't that a strange how that makes you feel standing here? Yes, sir. Now, I was reading a while ago in the scripture where Nathaniel came to Jesus, and Jesus, when he seen him coming, he called him a believer too. Now, when you come, you might not have been a believer, I would have noticed. But I knew you was a believer. I said you are a Christian. That's something like the same spirit. Is that right? Now, now we'll see what our Heavenly Father will reveal to me. You know that he's here. You have a, a feeling. You know that there's something different. Isn't that right? So you hold your hand up so your Spanish people can see. There's something there. Now, we're strangers, dear brother. We never met in life. Never met before. But, brother, I see your trouble. 
You have rheumatism, don't you? Yes, yes sir. You did have. You're free from that now. Jesus Christ has healed you. Raise your feet up and down like this. Amen. You are healed, my brother. You may go and be full of good courage in your Let us say praise the Lord. Some of the Spanish brethren get around him and thank the Lord, and he's wonderfully. Now, how did I see that? The man has a tax that his hands hurt. I see him sitting behind a house, rubbing his arm first. Sitting behind a leaning back with a chair. If any of his loved ones are here, might know that he's sitting like that. And then I see him sometime he was trying to get up from a bed, and he just couldn't hardly make himself out of bed. And he's, he's hurting. Anyone in here know the man? Raise your hands if anybody knows the man, anybody knows of him. You know what that's what was wrong with him? Is that right, brother? There's your witnesses out there, you see. The, see? Amen. Now, that's the vision that is seen. See what I mean? Now, everybody be reverent. Now, is that the same kind of a spirit that was up on our master? He told him, said, before you come, I see you when you were under a tree. I see him when he was getting out of the bed and when he was sitting behind the house. <laughs> see? All right, there it is. The same Holy Spirit. Isn't he wonderful? All right, now I'll bring the man here. How do you do, brother? You're a believer. Yeah, you're a minister too, aren't you? And your, your eyes is what's bothering you. Isn't that right, brother? Oh, and God bless you, my brother. Heavenly Father, bless my dear brother and give him his sight. Normally, again, his heart's full of love for you. And I bless him in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Let's say praise the Lord, everybody. How wonderful our master is. All right, you bring him. How do you do? You speak English. A little, all right. Are you an Indian? I thought so. From the Apache? Uh, I want to come visit your people again. Were you up when I was at the reservation, St. Carlos? You are. I have great respect for the Indian people. I love them, and God loves you, and we are strangers, you and I, but you have been sick for some time, haven't you? Yes, ma'am. You, uh, you have a, a female disorder, isn't that right? A heart trouble. Many times you get upset when you lay down the heart bothers you worse i see you reaching for your breath is that right you're healed my sister jesus christ makes you whole heavenly father we bless our dear sister now may she be a great testimony among her dear people in jesus name amen god bless you sister amen let us say praise be to god all right everybody reverend Oh, God, if, if to the uh, Apache Indians here, I got your telegram from San Carlos, and I may have to leave real early Monday morning to go home to get my wife to get back to California for the summer. If I don't go, I want to have two or three days up on the reservation with you people. And if I uh, do go, maybe I can get a day at least on my road back to stop in and see the uh, Indians at the reservation at San Carlos. If the missionary is here, I will try to be back right away to be with you, dear people. Sometimes, if you would like for me to, I'd like to come and be your associate pastor out there for a little while, just to be with you to help you out there for a while. I don't like to see people push back, no, sir. I think we owe the Indian plenty. Amen. God bless them. I've never seen one come through the line yet, but what was he? Oh, I said, damn in the Spanish, humble, very humble, and they believe what you tell them, and that's what it takes. 
All right, uh, Billy, bring this to me. How do you do, sir? Well, as soon as you walked up, when you were sitting there, you were thinking about, well, this is the time that I wanted to be here. Isn't that right? And when you were there, a real strange feeling come over you while you're sitting in the chair. Is that right? That's when your heart trouble left you, brother. You can go ahead home now. Let us say praise the Lord Jesus. Get well, brother. Just go ahead. Believe the blessing of God is upon you. Have faith. Just praise him. Forget all about it. Just go ahead. The promise is yours now. It's yours. God has promised it in his book. Promised it to his prophet or servant. Is that right? Amen. Remember, believe. How'd he do? Speak English. Phil? Um, could you come just a little closer, please? You love the Lord? I believe you do, sister. Wouldn't you like to be testimony up there on the reservation of your healing when I come back? Were you up there the last time I was there, St. Carlos? You remember the lady I wanted her to give me that little black-eyed baby? She said no. <laughs> she didn't want to give me her little baby. It was pretty, little baby. You've been sick some time. For years back, you started getting nervous first, having funny feelings, weary, strange feelings. Then all at once you begin to spit up something in your mouth, your stomach begin to hurt, and now you're sick at your stomach. That's right. You have peptic ulcer in your stomach caused from nervousness through the menopause change of life. Let me have your hand. The Lord Jesus loves you, and he died that you might be well. He sent me as his prophet to tell you what is truth. You believe truth. I'm going to pray and ask him, you go home and you can eat what you want to without any trouble. Almighty God, have mercy upon this dear woman standing here with truly a real faith. And you're standing here showing me a vision of what she's done. And I pray thee, Heavenly Father, to grant your blessings upon her as I bless her in your name. May she go home. May this condition leave her. She be a good, well woman to testify of your glory. I ask this sickness to leave her in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, sister. Go on your road. Eat now. You're all right. Let's say praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, my.